I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, I had a question from one of the viewers on the channel. He was talking about some of the videos that we did two years ago from Guatemala, or maybe it was a more recent one. But he asked the question, if you're going to be coming on vacation to the region, well, where would you pick? Would you go to Nicaragua or go to Guatemala? Because they are similar in some ways, but very different in a lot of others. Well, that's a great question, and I think we should tackle that on today's show. So let's get to that right after the bump. For those that are new to my channel, you may not know that I live here in Nicaragua, but we live not that far from Guatemala. It's a bus ride away. Okay, it's a pretty long bus ride, but we go up there by bus or we can take a flight and it is an absolute, absolutely beautiful country not that far away. So it's one of the things we love about living in this region is having access to many different places that we like a lot. Costa Rica, El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, Panama, they're all really close and quite accessible. So it's a great thing about living in the middle is that we get to use the whole region. We're not limited to just one place. But if you're coming down, it's your first time presumably coming to the region here in Central America, and you're going to be on vacation. Well, where would you choose to go? You've got some great options. And both Nicaragua and Guatemala are pretty big places where you could easily spend a few weeks and put in a real vacation. So let's talk a little bit about what may lead you to choose one or the other. Of course, a lot of personal preference is going to go into this and a lot comes down to where you're able to get flights, what the prices are like, what your schedule is like. It's a lot of things that I can't really address with because the question was, was pretty generic. But I'm going to give you at least my opinions of some high level things to think about. And that may hopefully guide you towards one choice or the other. All right, let's start with weather. If you're coming to Nicaragua, we're a warm country. We're not warm country part of the year. We're warm country all the time. Anywhere you go, we're just warm. Now, some places are really hot, like here in Leon. Some places are mild but warm, like Matagalpa, Hinotega, and Esteli. But no matter where you're going to go in the country, you're going to be having a warm vacation. That's not a bad thing, just you may be looking for an experience that leans towards an American summer experience as far as weather. Nicaragua's got you covered year-round. If you're trying to escape winter or something, we've got you. If you're looking for more of an eternal springtime environment, then Guatemala is your choice. Guatemala exists almost entirely at a fairly high altitude, and it's famous for its very, very mild weather year-round. So no matter what time of year you're coming, if you want something that's much more room temperature all the time, then Guatemala is probably going to be your choice. I think Guatemala leans towards a little bit rainier as well, but that may be just my personal opinion. I have not actually looked into that, but I tend to think of it as being a little bit more rainy. So climate alone may be a major dictator for you, but be aware if you're going to go down and spend some time in the in the ocean, you want to go to the coast in either country. Once you get down to sea level, we're basically the same temperature. Yeah, technically Nicaragua might be a degree or two warmer. It's going to be so close that you don't notice. So just be aware that it's the majority of the country where the population is that has the big differences. Nicaragua is warm everywhere, even in the deep interior, but Guatemala is mild in the interior and only warm warm on the coast, which has a very small population. Very few Guatemalans live or go to the coast. We don't think of it as a coastal destination, so you probably aren't thinking of it that way either. But technically, if you want to go surfing, you want to go hit the beaches, Guatemala has that stuff. It's just not popular in the way other things are. People think of Nicaragua and El Salvador and Costa Rica as your beach destination countries, whereas Guatemala you think of as a mountain and city destination country. It's just kind of the way that people think of it. It's not necessarily got to be the case, but it's an important way to look at it. The second big thing to consider, and this is another slam dunk one way or the other, if you're looking for a rural place, well, both countries have a lot of open countryside, small villages, tiny cities, places you can hang out and have this very laid back lifestyle. But if you're looking for the big city, well, Nicaragua doesn't really have one. Uh, Managua is our largest city, but it doesn't feel like a large city, and it's not actually that large anyway. It's about 1.3 million people sprawling over a big kind of combined village landscape. It's cool. It's interesting. If you got the time to put into it, it's worth investigating. But I would rarely see someone choosing to come to Nicaragua because they want the city experience of, Madag of Managua. It's just not something that we have as a strong suit here. Guatemala, on the other hand, has Guate, which is the ultimate large city in Central America. It's absolutely enormous, beautiful city with a lot of really cool stuff to do. So if you're looking for an urban experience, Guatemala is going to be your choice, hands down, no question. So that may be an answer in and of itself for you right there. 
Now, as far as really interesting things to hit as a tourist, if you're looking for old Mayan ruins and things like that, then it's going to be Guatemala. We have a little bit down here in Nicaragua, but very, very little. It's going to be isolated and a lot of work to go see. Certainly, if you're going to be passing by, take the time. But if you're looking for uh, pyramids or ancient sites or really digging into a lot of archaeology, well, Guatemala is just going to have a lot more. It is the traditional homeland of the Mayan Empire, so a lot of that stuff is centered there, which is pretty cool. If you're looking for volcanoes, we're pretty evenly matched. A lot of people are going to lean a little bit to Guatemala, but so close that it doesn't matter. Consider that a break even. Both of us have loads of volcanoes, active, inactive, climbable, whatever. If you want to go volcano surfing, that's, uh, you know, taking the, the surfboard and sledding down the volcano, then the volcano boarding, some people call it, that's here in Leon, Nicaragua. You definitely want to come here for that. If you want to go see an open active volcano, people tend to go to Guatemala for that, but you tend to get erupting volcanoes that are a little bit more dangerous. Uh, here in Nicaragua, we have an open volcano that you can see the lava, but it's very unlikely to erupt while you're there. That said, I don't know that it's open at the moment. We did have a very, very, very tiny bit of seismic activity on the volcano and some rocks fell into it, which doesn't imply there's going to be an eruption, but rocks falling in can trigger some activity. Just, it just cold and hot and extra material. Sometimes things happen. So for safety, it's been closed. I don't know if it's open yet or not. Check before you make a major decision on that. It could change any day in any direction. So just be aware of that. If you're looking for really interesting lake experiences, well, in this particular case, You've got two different but amazing options, one in each country. Here in Nicaragua, we have Lago Nicaragua, or also known as Lago Xolitla. I'm sorry, Lago Colcibosa. Xolitlan is the one to the north. Uh, Colcibosa, or Lago Nicaragua, is the largest lake in Central America. It is huge, really cool, has some of the amazing sites, and importantly, it has an island in the middle of it with two volcanoes on the island, and that island, Ometepe, has a, a population of about 55,000 permanent people. That's pretty big for an island in the middle of a lake. You take a ferry out to it. It's a very, very rural, quiet, weird little community that is completely separate from Nicaragua proper. It is absolutely interesting and beautiful and unique, and you're not going to find that anywhere else in the world. So if you're going to be here, you really got to do it. If you're going to be in Guatemala, you have the flip opposite. You have a lake that is in the middle of a whole bunch of volcanoes, and it's uh, Lago uh, Atitlan. It is the center of tourism in Guatemala, and instead of an island with the population in the middle and nothing around it, you have nothing in the middle and a little villages all the way around a slightly smaller but much deeper lake. It is in some ways, totally the opposite of each other, and in other ways, they seem like mirrors of each other. It's a very, which I guess opposite could be. It's a really interesting juxtaposition between the two. Uh, both have a lot of tourists, a lot of hippies specifically. Uh, both are lake-based and volcano-based uh, nature and interesting and just all kinds of stuff. If you're looking for a lot of small villages and you want to interact with a lot of tourist activities, then Guatemala is going to definitely have more of that. If you're looking to get away and be a little bit more isolated, then uh, Nicaragua is going to be a little bit stronger. And if you can go to both, they're really, really cool. Very much worth it. In neither case is it a place that I would specifically look to live in because I tend to look at things from a relocation and living perspective. But as a tourist, both are amazing and must see locations. Now, there are historic cities in both countries that are well worth visiting. So the more popular one is Antigua, Guatemala. This is the old capital of Guatemala. It's a good-sized historic city, and it's essentially a suburb of Guatemala City, but it's just far enough away that it feels like its own city. But if you actually live there and move around, you start to realize that they are connected together. So they are kind of the same metro area. But a lot of the uh, tourists, like shuttles, will go directly to Antigua, not to Guatemala City, but the flights are going to go into Guatemala City because it has the big airport. Antigua is is very clean, very touristy. So if you go there, it's nice, cool weather, which is fantastic. It's got lots of volcanoes around it, very cool. Uh, the city itself is in basically a living museum. So is Granada, Nicaragua. They are kind of sibling uh, cities. Granada was the first city founded in the region by the Spanish when they came in and created the colonies. So Granada is technically the older, but it was burned to the ground in the 1800s and is mostly a recreation since the 1800s. So the location and history goes back farther, but Antigua has some older actual firsthand buildings because it wasn't destroyed by the Americans who burned it completely to the ground when they failed to colonize the country over a long period of time in the 1800s. 
So, so Granada has got some amazing stuff, really good history. It's a great city to go and get tours of colonial structures and, and, and some really interesting old history. Uh, it's very tourist friendly. But Antigua is going to have even more. Guatemala definitely has, in general, you're going to hear this a bit, way more tourist infrastructure up in Guatemala. Nicaragua does have tourist infrastructure, especially in Granada, especially in Ometepe, especially in San Juan del Sur. But the amount of tourist infrastructure, way heavier up in Guatemala. So if you're looking to get off the beaten path, Nicaragua is going to be far more exotic. It's going to be a lot more interesting when you're telling your friends, hey, I'm heading off to Nicaragua for the week. I'll see you when I get back. They're going to be like, wait, you're going where? Well, tell me about this. Like, I don't know anything about it. I don't, it's, it's really hard to research things. I saw this guy, Scott, online, but he seems to be the only person. It's true. There's like very little information. If you want to go have a wild adventure and be like, I went where no tourist I know has ever gone before and it's unlikely to go again, Nicaragua, for sure. But if you want to go to a place that's a lot more tried and true, a lot of your friends are going to know it. There's more flights. It's just better known. Guatemala is going to be stronger. If you want to visit multiple cities, both countries really do have you covered. Leon and Matagalpa, Esteli, uh, Granada. Uh, you've got lots of options here in, in Nicaragua, but up in Guatemala, you've got uh, Quetzaltenango uh, and some others, at uh, Tecpan, and a lot of places that you can see as well. So in both, you've got that pretty well covered. Uh, there really are a lot of similarities. Food is not wildly different. Uh, culture is not wildly different. Uh, so a lot of it comes down to if there are specific things you want to see and do. And of course, for anyone who's looking to get more information on this, I'd be happy if you would go down and leave your comments or ask your questions down below. I'd be, you know, thrilled to, to answer in more detail about what I know. I've vacationed in Guatemala. I've been there uh, multiple times, but I, there's only so much that I know, but I will do my best to fill you in. And of course, you can send in video questions. There's information on how to do that down in the description so we can add you to the show as well uh, for any questions. And, and that's always fun. Um, but it really comes down to a lot of specifics of what you want to do on your trip. You want to do a ton of driving in the wilderness and the mountains? Probably Guatemala. You want to have a big Caribbean uh, experience where you're going to go out to Caribbean islands or you're going to go out to a long Caribbean coast and see something akin to Belize before it became really expensive? Then Nicaragua for sure. Guatemala has essentially nothing on the Caribbean. And not, I don't want to say absolutely nothing. They have a little village out there, uh, Livingston, I believe. But uh, Livingston, I presume, but uh, here in Nicaragua, we have an enormous coast on the Caribbean, plus the Corn Islands out in the Caribbean, where you can get a more traditional Caribbean island adventure, very small population, but very small islands as well. Uh, and that's very accessible by flying in from the mainland, or you can drive down to Bluefields and take a ferry out there, which is quite adventurous on its own. Uh, so those are things that Nicaragua has that Guatemala doesn't. Um, there's just a lot of different things like that. Now, Guatemala does have some really cool things out in the uh, far north and kind of northeast that I've not had a chance to do. Flores and uh, um, uh, some of the lakes out there. Th th there's just some really cool stuff that I need to go explore uh, getting up towards um, uh, their, their famous Mayan regions and such like Tikal, that area has some really interesting things and I've been waiting to go there to take my children so we can do that all together. I've spent time in Guatemala, but mostly in the cities uh, along the main, the main kind of corridor through the country. Um, I love both countries for sure. And in fact, they are my two top picks of places to live. I've chosen Nicaragua, but it is a near thing. If I was not in Nicaragua, Guatemala is absolutely the place that I would pick. And of course, El Salvador is in between and it's a wonderful place too. It's an entirely fantastic region. So I don't think you're going to go wrong no matter where you choose. If you're looking for the cheaper option, almost certainly Nicaragua is going to be cheaper, possibly a bit cheaper, but probably not by huge amounts. In general, food and housing and all those things are relatively close. It's slightly to Nicaragua's favor, but depending if you're going to do something, you're going to come down for a really long vacation, you can find some bigger cost savings in Nicaragua for sure. Guatemala is just, it just has a bigger economy and things are a little bit more expensive, but it's very very affordable as it is. Uh, not sure how many other things I can dig into that make sense between the countries. Uh, in both cases, you only have one major airport that you're looking at using. That's Guatemala City up in Guatemala and Managua here in Nicaragua. Unfortunately, it's very hard to fly directly in between them. Normally, you're going to take Avianca and fly through San Salvador to bounce between. And that's very easy to do and quite cost effective and doesn't take very long. Or if you want to take a shuttle here in Leon, we have the Ashimche shuttle, which goes directly from here to Antigua, Guatemala. Ashimche being the name of the old Guatemalan capital before Antigua. It's now near the city of Tecpan. And so the 
shuttle is named after that. It's actually, I believe, flagged out of Guatemala. You can also work your way there by taking local buses up to uh, Potosí, Nicaragua, take the ferry to El Salvador, and then find a way to get through El Salvador and into Guatemala. That would be pretty adventurous if you're going all that way, but it does exist as an option should someone want to really try that out. I hope if you do that someone films it and provides lots of information about that trip because that would be super interesting. Now, most tourists aren't going to care about this if you're coming from the outside. If you live in Central America, this is a big deal. But for outsiders, typically it's not, but I'm gonna mention it. If you're looking for things like amusement parks, things that are like big, built up, meant to be tourist infrastructure, that's definitely Guatemala. They have amusement parks and quite a few of them. Basically, all the amusement parks in Central America are up there. Here in Nicaragua, we really don't have any. Technically, you can sometimes try to claim there's like one or two, but realistically, we just don't have anything. So that could be a major thing if that's something you wanna do. Maybe you have little kids or you're just really into exploring amusement parks. It's worth noting. Also worth noting, now this starts getting really general. So most of your decision-making is probably from the things I said, but if you're interested in connecting to like Mexico, uh, San Salvador, or uh, the parts of Honduras that have the uh, Mayan ruins and, and the kind of the touristy stuff, more of the Caribbean, Honduras, or even to Belize, then Guatemala is going to be very strong for that. If you're interested in rural Southern El Salvador, if you're interested in uh, the capital of Honduras or the, the Valley of the Angels region, uh, or if you're interested in Costa Rica and combining that with your trip, then Nicaragua is going to be your choice. You can do all those from either, but Nicaragua is really quick and easy to get to those things uh, on one side and Guatemala on the other. So that typically, if you're going to go farther afield than the country you're in, that thing, that those places will be uh, factors. Nicaragua does benefit pretty heavily from Costa Rica being so close. So a lot of people combine Nicaragua with a Costa Rican trip. Uh, it's common to come do Nicaragua and then just zip into Costa Rica because it's very expensive down there. So people will tend to make a list of things that they really want to do in Costa Rica, stay in Nicaragua, do as much as they can, go to Costa Rica for a short time, do whatever it is they want to do, and then get back to Nicaragua to save costs so they can have a much longer trip, but combine Costa Rica into it. In most cases coming from the U.S., it seems from what I've researched that flying through Managua is now the cheaper option. It was not for a while. We used to use Costa Rica because it was so much cheaper during the immediate aftermath of COVID. But in more recent times, we're finding Managua to be much cheaper than flying through Costa Rica. And so instead of going to Costa Rica and visiting Nicaragua, it's now much better to visit Nicaragua and then visit visit into, or stay in Nicaragua and visit into Costa Rica uh, simply because Nicaragua is closer, so it makes the path make more sense, and the flights tend to be cheaper. Not always. You've got to check the flights for the specific dates that you're looking at coming, you're presuming you're coming by plane, but that uh, that can be a factor. A lot of people still, though, like to fly into Costa Rica for whatever reason. They just like the airport, so they like the options of the airlines. That's very doable as well. Guatemala is not like that. Pretty much you're going to have to fly into Guatemala itself, so you're not going to like fly into a neighboring country and drive over. Not that you can't. It just doesn't make much sense. If you're going to do that, it would be San Salvador. You can do that, but there's really easy flights from San Salvador to Guatemala City, so that tends to be what you do. Same thing, if you were flying in there to come to Nicaragua, you would just take the hopper uh, from there to Nicaragua and fly into Managua once again. But flying into Costa Rica, it sometimes makes sense to fly into Liberia in the north and then just take a taxi or a bus into Nicaragua, uh, depending on what you want to do. That does exist as an option. And if you're coming from Europe, then Costa Rica tends to be really good because you're coming in through San Jose and you just take the bus up from there. Very easy as well. A little bit more time consuming, but very easy. I hope that answers uh, whatever question you have. Certainly get down and ask more details and I'll expand on this for whatever it is that you're specifically looking for. Uh, but both countries are amazing options, but I really do think of one as a warm, laid back rural thing with a lot of focus on beaches and natural habitat uh, in the where you're looking at the, you know, the canyons, the volcanoes, the colonial cities, uh, and everything's very warm, and you're probably going to want to spend a bit of time on the beaches. We're just a beach-heavy place between the Corn Islands, the Caribbean coast around Bluefields, the entire long uh, Pacific coast, including the Costa Esmeralda, and uh, Ometepe with all of its lake beachfront stuff going on. We're beach central, so we tend to think of things that way. Plus, we're warm, so people like to be around the water. Guatemala tends to like being in the mountains, and they like the cooler weather and the big cities, and it's a lot more about exploring uh, different types of environments up in the mountains. So are you looking for beach or mountain? More than anything, that may be your decision factor because that basically defines the entire experience of each country. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.